Gyroscopic controls are a fickle and poison chalice. Very few games try it, and very few games in that segment pull it off. But Unable's definitely plays better as a game with the gyroscopic controls turned on, even if you can play it without. And it's because this game is a fully tactile, physics-based puzzle game. Each level is designed like a diorama trapped inside a snow globe. But when you've got the gyroscopic controls turned on, it mimics whatever you're doing with your controller. So if you flip the controller upside down, the level will flip with it. Tilt it on its side, same thing will happen. And you've got full 360, like 720 motion as you go all the way around. The level will mimic whatever you're doing with your controller. And it's a really interesting concept because inside these levels are various ragdoll objects that you take control of. Mostly humans, sometimes dinosaurs and other weird objects too, like robots. But the idea is that you need to manoeuvre that person or object or thing to touch and interact with various other objects inside the level. And the only way how you can do that, because you can't control anything directly, is to tilt and twist the level around in a way that untethers things that are not tied down to the floor, but also keep your person or object or thing safe because inside levels not only are there things that you need to touch and collect for points but you'll also need to avoid traps so for example there's a level where you're on a lido in a swimming swimming pool but if you leave the lady in the pool she will drown and so will the cat and so will her friends so you constantly have to keep flipping the level over to flip them back out again before they drown and you die there's another level with Dracula where there's spikes popping out of the ground and you'll get severed in with that. Other levels are a bit more less chaotic about just shaking things around and trying to get you to hit things. They're more like 3D interactive mazes with pinballs. So there's one where you've got a robot head and you're trying to roll it along various different shafts so that it then collects its body and its arms and its legs, for example, and then charge its battery. Another really cool one has you rolling as a knight rolled up as a pinball uh, around a hedge maze trying to avoid a dragon's breath that will then kill you if, you, if it spots you. So each level is really unique and different. But the goal is largely the same, even if they're split into some more gamified and some are just more uh, sandboxy areas for you to smash about with your controller as you wriggle and roll it around. And this brings me to the deeply flawed aspect of Unable's and the way how it plays. Half the time, because you need to constantly tip things upside down and roll things around and try and hope for the best to get things to touch each other, you can't actually see what's going on in the screen or on the game because you're having to use guesstimate spatial awareness when you've turned a level upside down. You can only see the floor, <laughs> so you can't see what's going on underneath. And whilst there are various markers that will point out what you're trying to vaguely aim at, you might have to start shaking things around, but you're kind of in the lap of the gods and randomization as to whether or not any of this is actually working or doing anything. So you start then flipping it over, flipping it back, tilting it to its side, rotating it around. And whilst this is far more fun and interesting and you get much more nuance when you're using the gyroscopic controls because a small few degrees tilt will be actually represented in the levels. And I have to give Unable's praise here, the gyroscopic control mimicking the controller and the level is superb. It's just the fundamental principle of I can't see what's going on on the screen and it feels too chaotic and randomised just plagues this game constantly. And whilst you could argue, oh, it's funny, it's comedy physics, when you're trying to then do something that's much more precise with that, you've got this jarring actuality against expectations and it feels like... You're, it's just too randomised as to whether or not you're going to do something well or not. There's a few other things with this game where some good quality playtesting might have helped make this game better to understand. The first thing is that there's an easy and a hard mode, but they aren't really the right names for what you're doing. Easy mode is practice mode, where you have no time limit, you can't die, and it's more about exploring what on earth each level has to offer. 
because to its credit every level in Unables is very different and you control someone different and there's a context specific button for each level similar to Gnaw actually which is another experimental gyroscopic-ish game um, you have this context specific button that might uh, trigger thunder, it might breathe some fire, it might um, open and shut doors on the school bus or the robot level. It's very different per level, but you need to play about with it to understand what on earth each level lets you do with it and how you can better use it. So easy mode's great for that. Then you move into hard mode, but hard mode is really just normal because that's where you have a 60 second time limit. You can absolutely die on all of the traps that are going on around the place. But it also judges you on how many of the things that you collect within that 60 seconds or whether you complete the level at all by touching everything and satisfying all conditions. The problem is, is that it's icon based and it's not very specific on what are the things that you should be doing. There's some levels later on, particularly around two dinosaurs being in uh, like a little prehistoric area. I genuinely don't know what some of those icons mean and I'm stuck because I can't get three stars on that level because I don't understand what it is that I'm supposed to do. And you can't go and look and see what the objectives are. It's too icon heavy, but the icons aren't obvious enough for you to go, aha, that's what I need to do. The second problem with all of this is that there's a star quota that you need to build up in order to then uh, open up the next levels as you go but it's quite a high ceiling which requires you to then go back and replay levels until you get it right which really exposes the randomness of it and that you feel quite helpless in terms of making sure that you are in control of the game and in control of your own destiny and it's your skill along with the chaotic physics that are allowing you to complete levels because sometimes I three starred stuff and went what hang on <laughs> and then other times I was being really precise and trying my best and was getting absolutely nowhere and that felt wrong to me. So that brings me to the fact that this is a hodgepodge of fantastic ideas and unique elements mixed with deeply flawed execution. Why would you create a game where you can't see what you're doing half the time and not have a see-through floor? <laughs> it's things like that where I just think some user testing beyond maybe the bubble that it was in before it went live may have been quite helpful. And I don't know the developer, so I have no idea if this took place or not. But there are some fundamental like own goals here that stops Unables being a truly unique and enjoyable experience. To me, I felt disconnected whilst feeling immediately connected with the gyroscopic controls. And I think this is going to be probably what the most Marmite game I play in 2024. And I don't know who to recommend it for and who would enjoy this game outside of people that just love a really balmy off the wall weird um alter experience for want of a better phrase so yeah unables i'm unable to give it a real thumbs up or a thumbs down it's really weird <laughs> i hope this has made sense this is probably the most balmy review i've done in this year but it's the most balmy game i've played so probably suits Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support makes all the difference and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.